Like and subscribe. What made you realize your family was just a bunch of people you know, and not all of them will be your friends? When my mom remarried, and tried to get me to accept my step family, by using the phrase you don't get to pick family. The dissonance of that idea and the fact, that she literally just picked family made me realize, that the notion of family has been used against us for far too long. Pick your family and live happily. When it became clear, that family gatherings were a strain. Something to be asterisky and d-u-r-e-d asterisk, because it's expected of us to be there, and to try to get along, even though we'd rather be elsewhere, or with someone else. My mother abused my sister and I a lot, when we were younger. At 17 I finally stood up to her, and was thrown out on my own for it. My family didn't immediately exclude me, but they did take her side. I was a shameful and ungrateful child, and she was somehow the victim. As time went on I was excluded from a lot of family stuff, partly by them, partly by my own choice. One year I showed up for Christmas dinner at my aunt's house, and realized they weren't even people I know. They were people I used to know, but I wasn't one of them. I stopped showing up for family gatherings. No one ever reached out to me, or tried to include me, and I realized that had been the case for a while already. They had been ready to just let me go, and once I realized it, I went. That Christmas was 14 years ago, and it was the last time I saw, or spoke to most of them. For daring to believe, that I didn't deserve to live in fear, while being abused physically, psychologically, and emotionally, I no longer have any family, except for one sister, on my father's side, I, E, not my mother's daughter. My mother died, when I was 5 years old. Being born a girl my grandparents thought it was inappropriate for my father to raise me, so they tried to rip me away. My father remarried, and my grandparents were extremely opposed to it. After a 7 year long custody battle they were still salty about it. Enough to condone my father as many infidelities. And turn a blind eye. Which was shocking to me, because when I've all been brought up strictly Catholic, after I had turned 18, I thought I would be free from all this family bull. But no, oh no. They still wanted control. Cause now they are too old, two out of three of their children are disabled, my aunt and father, and their eldest son wants nothing to do with them. Now they need a carriage either. My only brother, they neglected and overprotected him so much, so that he cannot be a functioning adult and in order to survive joined in on the campaign that I am a horrible human being for not taking up the mantle of woman of the house, and taking care of them all, and looking after the family a starter o vertical bar. These people are not my family. Was constantly told growing up the last name, always stick together. During my parents divorce I just realized everyone on my dad's side are either bipolar, alcoholics or dead to overdose, never was talked to unless it was drama about my mother, and how bad she is as a parent, while true, it's was the only thing mentioned to me. If I stayed with my dad I knew I was gonna fall down that path. The fact my mother acts, like I'm an investment, that isn't getting her the returns she wants. When my grandma passed, and we all just really stopped making the effort to get together. She was kind of the linchpin that held us together. I realized that I was seeing many extended family members, aunts, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, more out of obligation than desire. I really don't miss any of them. I'm a firm believer that you create your own family, which is exactly what I did in the years following my grandmother's passing. I'm not sure when it happened, but at some point I just realized, that I couldn't relate to my extended family at all. They can just talk for hours on end and be fine, but I've got absolutely nothing to say. Now I just save a 4 hour drive each way at Christmas, and stay home with my dog, who understands me infinitely better than anyone in the extended family does. My grandparents are all dead at this point, so I've really got no reason to go. At the age of 6 my mother took my favorite stuffed animal, he was a dog named Bobbo, and as a punishment burned him in front of me. As I watched him melt I knew this lady called mother would be my arch nemesis for life. It's been true to today. 
I can't remember when I realized it, but I remember the day I gave up trying to build a relationship or hopes of a future friendship. I had gone through a massive depressive episode where I had spent the last month doing everything that was asked of me without any complaints, literally not saying anything, and just contemplating suicide, while I'd sit silently in the living room with my family. I went THR entire time with only occasionally uttering okay, and absolutely nothing else. After a while I actually attempted suicide and failed, tried hanging myself in a park, and I walked home. My mom flipped her about me not coming straight home after school and I yelled back at her as much as I could. We went back and forth, and I remember her main argument point was you've been so good the last month, what's changed now? Why can't you always be like you've been this past month? That's the daughter I love, and I don't understand why you can't be like that all the time. And it just clicked for me that the past month, while I had been thinking of suicide, and in a depressive episode just going through the motions and absolutely miserable, she had seen it as an improvement, and that she only loved me when I obeyed her every command without question or comment. So yeah, I never had a good relationship or even a relationship to begin with with my family, but they all just kind of showed in different ways throughout the years that we don't get along. And if we hadn't been living together then I would have never even talked to them in the first place. Trump's presidency. And their continued support of him after January 6. I'm the youngest of three, my closest aged sibling is 13 years older than me. I realized this when he moved out, and when I only saw him twice a year starting when I was 6. Now we only see each other at funerals. And we are running out of people older than us in the same area. Once the last one goes I don't think I'll see my brother again. They are rich and bragging about it constantly. I have two rich non-family friends that absolutely dwarf them in term of wealth. And they never ever bragged about it. In like 15 years of knowing them. Maybe the super rich don't usually brag about it. And it's more something the casual rich do. Who knows and who cares. Whether you are rich poor, or whatever I can't stand people bragging and showing off. Maybe it's an old money versus. Now though rich thing. Those who have had extraordinary wealth for generations tend to show restraint and decorum. Almost like they are responsible for the family brand. Now though rich is a term developed for those who came into great wealth more recently, and tend to brag, and have ostentatious displays, shiny cars, boats etc to the point of looking cheap and tacky. I never was really close with my parents and younger brother. But they always made sure I had everything I needed. Food, good education, toys. But since they were really busy with their lives, we didn't do much together. When my younger brother was born, he's 10 years younger, we did more things together though. My father's family was strict and traditional, but they were okay when we went to visit them. But my mother's family seemed to ignore me when we went to visit them. I'm half Japanese slash half Korean, but lived in Japan. Maybe because I never learned Korean, so I had trouble communicating with them. My father and I also didn't share their religion, Christian. When I was 21 years old, my mother kicked me out of the house when she discovered I'm gay. To her, I no longer exist. She has one son, my younger brother. I have limited contact with my father. I know that I'm not really a good son or a good older brother to them, but I see them no longer as my family. Semicolon. I do got a new family though. My partner his parents, and his younger sister, replaced my real family. My family? You cold use the word family when it came to them. The proper term is a loose association of drift bound together by necessity by money. Talk about the worst examples of conniving double dealing backstabbing relatives you'll ever meet, and that was just my mother's side of the family. My dad his brother and two sisters? Jaws the shark had nothing on them. Don't remember a time when the penny dropped for me. Maybe being adopted had something to do with it, but I've never had the whole blood ties thing to disillusion me to what a family really is. I've got loads of aunts and uncles thanks to both my adoptive parents coming from huge families. I've got somewhere on the order of 27 first cousins, and I've never bothered to try to calculate second cousins. 
It's a lot of people. Of all those people, I actually felt comfortable around, and liked by maybe 12 of them, not including immediate family. And of those 12, I keep an actual contact with about 3 of them. To cousins and an aunt, said cousin's mom. I have family, and I have what I've named my true family which is people I've chosen to be family who have also chosen me. I'm closer to these people than a lot of married folks are to their spouses. A little bonus info, I've actually contacted my biological family. Covered has put the kibosh on getting to know them in person much, but I've had a few correspondences here and there, and met both my half sisters and my two nephews from my younger sister. There was definitely something special between us, but I think it's because we had all spent most of our lives wondering about if we would ever meet and all of us wanted it to go well. I would say they are part of my chosen family, I just haven't gotten to spend as much time with them as I'd like thanks to a microscopic killer velcro ball. Hearing the outside perspectives of friends on how my parents treat and always treated me. Never had realized it was wrong or bad, even if it made me feel horrible, since they are my parents. The 2016 election. Asterisk no seriously, mom and dad, the man is removing federal benefits and protections for people like me, and fomenting hatred against your non-white grandchildren. For a second I thought this was a Vin Diesel post. When I was around 24, my 14 year old cousin told her parents she was gay. They threw her out, and I took her in. I then went through the process of officially adopting her, because I knew her father would try some area if he still had legal authority over her. He tried to force her into a gay conversion therapy camp, thankfully after I got custody, and was able to legally prevent it and beat his for the attempted kidnapping. About a week later I had to point a gun in the faces of both her older brothers, when they snuck onto my property at 1am, and convinced them, that the next time they did that, I'd be calling the coroner. Guess who doesn't get invited to grandma's for thanksgiving? Those assholes. Dom, is that you? Did you finally realize that all your family are just toxic criminals? When my cousin dated my ex of 3 years 3 days, after we broke up. Told my entire dad's side he only dated me to get to her, and that I was selling porn I made with him, wasn't, I was only 17 too, and they all made fun of me for it. I was forced to go to her wedding a few years later, different guy she married, and didn't even speak to her. They all blocked me, and haven't spoken to me since. I plan to never see them again until our grandfather or my father passes away. When my father tried to bury me alive with the permission of other neighbors around him condoning his actions. There are a lot of reasons however the one that spread the icing on the cake and lit the candles was a few years ago, when my dad went to prison. My family which always met for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and played inside jokes on each other at the strike of a bell fell out. My brother and I received only a call from our grandmother informing us that our father was sent to prison. Not a single member reached out to console or just check in. That year Thanksgiving wasn't even discussed. The same happened with Christmas. I was 17 without a driver's license and had to wait several months to see my grandma and she burst into tears when my aunt brought me to her and told me she was so scared she would never see me again which would have been especially hard, since we were seeing each other on a bi-weekly basis for about 10 years. My grandmother's siblings totally dropped her, and her only brother figured she should give her property to his eldest son, and move to Arizona. That was as far as I understand the first time he spoke with her for months after my father's initial sentencing. I moved to Germany, and have only heard from my immediate family and my grandma, per post since she had no phone. Super cute. They chose to leave us alone entirely. I chose to move on, and what do you know, I have found the most amazing and valuable people in my life so far. Pick your family as you would pick a weapon for battle. What fits you, and serves you well? I don't know that I ever thought my family would all be my friends. I barely know most of them. My mom's side of the family and dad's side of the family are polar opposite regarding how they approach confrontation or addressing people. 
Dad sighed, is the asterisk I'm gonna wait until you leave so I can talk about you do that bothers me behind your back. Mom sighed, is the asterisk I'm gonna tell you to your face how I feel about what you're doing. But I'll be tactful about it, and at least with full transparency, you know where I stand. I prefer hanging out with my mom's side a lot more. There aren't family grudges, and any arguments are mended quickly, and laughed about later. Got kicked out of the house I was raised in at 11 years old, a sudden change of tone, and I'm not welcome here anymore apparently, can't even go see my grandma, yet they act like I was the one who's cut ties. I'm Morans. Ever since I left the Mormon church. Instantly no invites to family events, almost no contact. To them I am no longer a viable person. I have failed, because I listen to facts and logic instead of running on feelings. To them I am just a failed loser. After one family member ruins your credit, and almost pushes you into bankruptcy, and another family member gets you fired when you're trying to fix the mess caused by the first family member. All the stupid little off-handed comments they would make, either I or law on social media. One of my cousins had a baby and somebody close to me goes there and join him, before he turns into, insert my son or name. Oh er like, you. Oh, and when I became the black sheep of the family, because my parents were divorced. But then an uncle got divorced, and Heller's treated normal. I have been married for 10 plus years now, got married fairly young, and I still get the err I have got married so young, it won a last oh speech. All of them. My husband and I are doing great and my son is amazing, and I want to say <laughs> you to all of my family who are assholes. Sometime in middle school. Had a lot of realizations, and learning times at that life stage. Since my dad died. 16 years ago. When I realized the fact, that I rarely met my mom or side of the family whilst not an accident of planning and schedules. My not dad and unstepmom were both terrible people who treated me like the scum of the earth. My mom never stood up for me, even when I was in direct line of harm. She may love me, but the hurt she's allowed is too great for full forgiveness. Both of these were fully realized by the time I was 16. Blood don't mean <laughs> to me. This past holiday season was a relief. We did not need to sit around awkwardly talking about surface topics. I think when my parents pass, I probably want to talk to my siblings much. During an argument, my mom revealed that my, admittedly small, family didn't actually like me. They were nice to me, because they felt sorry for me. Some admitted it. And others just treated me terribly, now that the facade wasn't needed anymore. But I have never gotten along with my family. I was just nice to them, because I believed, that they loved me. But that love, was merely out of obligation, rather than an intense like for who I am. But it isn't a big deal for me. We didn't break some bond we made. We just happen to be related. Doesn't mean we have to love each other. When I realized that they had spent way more time talking about me behind my back than actually taking the time to talk to me directly. It was so much easier to speculate about Sumi on Earth life, to just gossip about them, than to go out of your way to have a conversation and show compassion. I don't consider people like that to be family. When I came out as gay and stopped getting invited to Thanksgiving and Christmas. Now I can actually enjoy those holidays. I found out my father's side of the family has a social media group. When I asked why I wasn't invited to it, I was told that not everyone is on it, only a few people from each family. Turns out that means literally everyone except me. All my aunts, uncles, brothers, cousins, cousins new girlfriend, etc are on it. If it's any consolation, my family has a whatsapp group and I took one peek, got completely freaked out by their horrible politics, and left for good. You're probably not missing anything. I guess I have always known. They have never been my friends. 
and in hindsight it's easy to see, that they never wanted me. Takes a long, while to accept though, that what is supposed to be family is actually just a bunch of strangers, that don't really want anything to do with me. So I told them to <laughs> off. Best and worst thing I have ever done. I'm happier now. Just because someone is family doesn't mean you have to keep them in your life. You've been visited by the ghost of a very important man. Pay your respects by liking and subscribing, and he'll grant you three weeks of good luck.